So hopefully we don't uh, capsize, and that's pretty much our main goal for the next. Is 10 to not capsize. Let's freaking give her, dude. Let's giddy up. Okay, kind of game plan. <laughs> we didn't really talk about this part. Yeah, we didn't talk about what we're doing, but um, let's freaking do it, dude. We just hope for the best. It seems pretty easy. Well, let's go. Let's go. Okay, start pushing out. Okay, hop in. Oh. Hop in. I'm getting in, bro. Okay, you start paddling. All right, all right. Go, 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 go. Other way, other way, other way. Yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. We're doing it. Fast as you can. <laughs> so what are, the, what are the odds we get? <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Howdy, howdy, ho, welcome back to the show. Today on Worlds, we got freaking this stud muffin right here. Howdy. Miked up, let's rip her. I never would have thought miked up, then I would have never thought miked up on a podcast, <laughs> and then I really ne never would have thought miked up on a podcast. On a boat. In an inflatable boat <laughs> in the ocean, <laughs> at sunrise. So for people who are just listening, or for the lovely people at home watching, we're on a boat, and uh, we're gonna, what are we doing? We're going fishing. We're going, we have fishing poles. Doritos. And then we also have, oh, we should probably close yeah, this. Yeah, we should probably close this. That's not water, I mean. <laughs> but basically the game plan is, is. The game plan is, is. The game plan is, is, is that uh, we're going fishing and then depending on how that goes for us, um, we might hop in the water and do some diving. And then we also have a spear on on deck today, so we might shoot something too. Kids are very excited. We should honestly get our rods ready. All right, let's freaking rip it. Cause like, we should have just dropped down right then. Grip it and rip oh. it. So what is your name, friend? Who uh, are you? Why should people care about you? Jeez. <laughs> uh, my name's it's Henry. Brutal. That is, that's kind of a brutal, <laughs> hard brutal to answer. Introduction. Hard to answer question. My name's Henry and- uh, Henry Hume. Henry Hume. The most like, Probably marketable name I've heard. Besides you think? David Dobrik. Henry Hume, David Dobrik, those are pretty good. Pretty I'll take marketable it. names, yeah. Maxwell Sauerbrei, shout out to my family. I don't know how marketable that name is. Yeah, it's a, that's a toughie. Um, it's all good. That's why we call this Worlds. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from? Born and raised in Santa Monica, California. I spend most of my time, or most of my free time, out doing stuff like this. If it's uh, hiking, fishing, traveling, um, I've gotten into spear fishing recently. Basically just everything outdoors. Do you remember when you started adventuring? Like, like I mean like when you're a kid, yeah. you kind of just like do stupid shit with your friends, but did you ever like take it to another level where you're yeah. like, oh, I'm gonna like do really stupid shit with my friends? Yeah, I don't know, maybe like 13. I started, like me and my friends would always like, can, can we cuss on this? Oh yeah. All right, I'm just like checking. <laughs> um, me and my friends I would always lot, like so uh, fuck sure. around and stuff and like skate, skate around, do other dumb shit we probably shouldn't, shouldn't have been doing. But probably in like- In LA. In LA, yeah. just getting up to no good. Yeah, classic. Um, but at 13, or I would say I started doing stuff like alone. Like I was, I'm totally fine being alone and I have a lot of fun being with myself. So like I would go on solo adventures with my dog with my dog all the time and uh, I would say that's when it kind of really started like, like you're like building a relationship with your dog and then like doing things with him yeah I mean at like 13 sick. I would be sneaking out of the house and like most people would probably assume like what's like this kid's up to no good like partying or whatever yeah. but like I'd be sneaking out of my house at 5 a.m. to like go see the sunrise with my dog really like innocent stuff but like not really because I like wouldn't tell my parents where I was going and I'd be hiking into the mountains and it'd be like dark out and I just have like my dog whose name whose name is Gypsy, who is an absolute legend. Child to Gypsy. And um yeah, we we've had some pretty insane, scary memories that I will for sure remember forever. You you wanna share any? From like the like the, the beginning days? I have one it might it might be 
one of my best stories, and it is with Gypsy. Well, perfect. You got a you got a forum to share it. So yeah. Let's, let's let's what do you got? Dude, this is actually the first time this has <laughs> ever been said like publicly. Really? Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm honored that I have the opportunity to share it. I'm hyping people. it up like it's some crazy. Well, it is pretty crazy. All right. <laughs> so it was like I was probably 14 or something. Yeah. And um, I was living in an apartment with my family in Santa Monica. And the apartment has like the front door and then it has the basement downside where all the cars park. Yeah. And the night before my mission, I was like, I, I knew I was doing it. So I was getting prepared and my parents weren't going to be down with me leaving at 3 a.m. or whatever to yeah. go hike. Like any parent. How old were you? 14, you 14, said, 14 right? 15 or yeah. something. Wow. Pretty young. Okay. So the night before I go down into my basement and my, the apartment was all, um, rigged where if you open the door it goes beep 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 okay yeah so the night before i go down to the basement and i open the door and wedge it so i know in the morning that it won't it won't make the noise make the noise yeah. okay so i do that then i wake up at probably 3 a.m or something and um the trail we were the trail uh we wanted to do was probably 10 miles from my house yeah and i couldn't drive so i biked 10 miles to this place to this trailhead with my dog. And wow. my dog wasn't on a leash and we were biking through the dark in LA. Yeah. Dog not on the leash, just like going down random streets and stuff and she would just follow me. Wow, um, that's nuts. And- In LA, when you're- 14, Are you familiar kind no, of? No, I know this, nothing about LA. Well, you know the boardwalk. <laughs> I do know the boardwalk. Okay, so like we- Santa Monica boardwalk? Yeah, so yeah, we hit yeah. the boardwalk okay. and then we were going down the boardwalk and then there's this other road called Temescal. Okay. And it's this huge long road and it kind of is where like the canyon starts. And we're biking up, pitch dark out, not a single car out. And I just start hearing this wailing, like the, the worst sound ever, yeah. like s someone's really in pain or whatever. And I'm biking up like so scared. And then I realized it was this deer who got hit by a car. Oh God. And it's, this is gonna get pretty gory. It's back <laughs> legs were just, gone yeah. like the car just took Jesus. out the back legs so this thing is like screaming so i felt so bad so i walk up to it with my dog and i took my backpack off because i had this huge uh backpack and i didn't want to intimidate the deer and i walked up to it and i was assessing the situation i'm like this is so sad like yeah. the deer's dying damn so me and my gypsy was totally cool with the deer like not confronting it or anything and then I start looking at my phone because I'm trying to find a number for like animal control or something to put this deer, deer down on, yeah. to get it out of its misery. And as I'm looking down at my phone, Gypsy starts growling. And I, I am not exaggerating at all right now. Starts <laughs> growling and I look up and around me, it's like a, it's like a movie. Coyotes circling us. And I'm wow. not talking like coyotes like this, like huge, well-fed, ripped coyotes yeah. circling us probably like six to eight coyotes going around and i always hike with a knife that's my number one tip to any Smart hiker guy, yeah always have a knife on you and my knife was in my backpack which i took off because i didn't want to intimidate the deer so the knife is between me and the coyotes <laughs> so i'm like i'm done and one of the coyotes well i think they were matt pissed off because I was, they thought I was like taking their food because yeah, yeah. I didn't, then I realized that they got hit, the deer got hit by the car and there was also bite wounds from the deer, uh, from the coyotes, from the coyotes. Okay. so they were feeding on it. So then they uh, thought I was like taking away their food, so they were so aggressive. Anyways, one tried to bite me. What? Full on attacked me. And it's so crazy so it like <laughs> lunges for my leg yeah. and gypsy my dog i've never seen the side of her turned full like full like animal mode gnarly, crazy. got this yeah. coyote by the neck and just starts literally trying to kill it and i'm like oh my god i mean i'm 14 like i'm breaking down i'm probably already crying or something and all the coyotes get mad at gypsy and chase her into the mountains so then i'm left all alone without my dog, my favorite like dog friend ever. Yeah. And I'm sitting here with this wailing deer, just bawling my eyes out. Cause I thought I basically just killed my dog and she's getting Holy like shit. eaten alive in the mountains. Yeah. And then I was there for probably 10 minutes, still pitch black out. 
and out of nowhere I hear like bushes rumbling like out in the canyon and she comes running out with coyotes just still chasing her so she must have been running around the whole time like getting away from them and then we just booked it up this road and they eventually stopped but that really? is probably my my uh scary probably my scariest hike uh not scariest hiking adventure there's more but that was that wasn't your scariest that's probably not my gnarly. scariest but that I mean, was 14 that's probably pretty, my best one that's pretty intense dude it was and then i i kept it for my parents too because like what am i going to tell them like i just put our dog in danger yeah. and i was out at 4 a.m Wow. So like they didn't know for a couple of years, but I just remember like I think Robbie. I called <laughs> called one of my buddies up, just bawling my eyes out because like, it was just shit. so much to take in. Yeah, let's uh, set up the rods. All right, let's rip her. Also, I know nothing about fishing, <laughs> so and we're fishing. That's I'll leave it at that. I forgot bait, so <laughs> I usually use squid, which works decent. But now we have um, bread, peas, carrots, and a couple lures. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> anything flies on this boat. Have you fished before? No. <laughs> oh. Full cork, let's rip. Wait, you've never, like... No, I've fished. I'm yeah. just fucking with you. Were you a fan of school? Huh. S school is... School was the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. Really? Yeah. So, wait, when did you... So, you went to preschool. When did you start not liking school? Was it, like, from the get-go? Dude, just that whole system for me is just so messed up. Like I just hate how they force classes upon you and you know you're not choose and you know you're not do. interested in it. So what were like those big things for you that you were like I'm not, not interested, interested in? in this, but I still have to do it. Every single one. Really? I mean you I mean PE? Ooh, PE. Everyone likes PE, bro. PE and photo was my lifesaver. Okay. But I so mean you liked photo then. Yeah, but photo was in high school. Okay. So middle school I had nothing. Really? I mean except PE. So you didn't like it in 5th grade. And how did you, uh, how did you go about doing school? Like, were your grades good still or no? They weren't that good, no. I would say on average, probably like B's, but I mean, if I had a bad vibe with the teacher, I just did not care. I mean, I was, I could get down to like the 30s. Yeah. When you went to school, did you, or do you have uh, some sort of grading platform where it like shows you what your grade is and it gives you like a color of it? Oh yeah, Do you know we what had talking? like green was an A. My, it was called Illuminate for me. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I would always make a joke that mine was like an African sunset because <laughs> it would be like red, yellow, and then... That's kind of funny. Yeah, like different shades. The African sunset. And then, uh, so you said you, you were interested in photo, and when did that really kind of spark? Because that seems like it's been your thing for like a while. Dude, that is my thing. I would say that started, that started like when my adventuring started. Like, I wouldn't go out and not take a photo. My first camera, which I highly recommend to anyone who wants to get into it, because now they've really improved, but it was a Rebel T3i. Okay. And now, like, the 5i and 6i are pretty, pretty next fire. level. Yeah. Um, but that's what I started with, and then I believe I was gifted a Canon 7D, and then from then on, GoPro has kind of been my thing generation dude it's crazy GoPro how GoPros generations. can like like this is a gopro like yeah. how much they've changed and improved and become something that is like so reliable that you don't even need god i love this construction noise were you into more photo or video at first or kind of how did that manifest my thing was video with a gopro hero 3 black oh yeah dude and then you got to do the screenshot. So I would actually oh, okay. like never, I think, send out video. I would always take a screenshot of the video. That's the way it kind of went. That was my that was my workflow. That was the OG workflow. Yeah, dude. Honestly, that's still the workflow. <laughs> the good yeah, I'm old still doing it. And if you get a red, then you can just screenshot and use them as prints. So there you go. I can't say I've ever used a red. Really? Mm -mm. Dude, I'm lucky enough. I've used a red actually a couple times. They're freaking nutsos, dude. Really? For those who don't know, Red, Red camera is like basically the, the craziest cam in the game. Uh, there's blue camera and red camera are the biggest competitors. Have blue? you used a blue camera? Yeah. There's, bl there's blue? Yeah, there's blue and red. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, how much is there's, a... There's no blue camera. I'm oh, there isn't? <laughs> there's no blue. So you said you've done vlogging before? Dude, yeah, I have a... Uh... You have a hidden channel somewhere? No. <laughs> Yeah, no, I do. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> it's called the Opus Collective. No way. Yeah, dude. How have I haven't seen it. 
Did you not like show it? Because I'm glad that you haven't seen it. That means I've done my job correctly. Damn. No, funny story. I I had a guy, a skier, a pro skier, like a well-known pro skier. I won't say his name. He he was like, he wanted me to film for him. Yeah. And then he started like looking me up and Googling me. And then he found my old vlogs. No. And he's like, what are, like, what is this? Like what, like what? He wasn't into it? No, he's like, this is fucking weird, dude. And I was like, yeah, it's cringy and it's old and I'm sorry. And then I didn't get the job. No way. So yeah, I, uh, that's kind of annoying. Be careful what's on the internet, dude. They, they will, you I'm will get screwed over. I'm kind of, especially now. Dude, yeah. Because like anything from long time ago, they will find it. And I still have them up just because I think it's funny. And anyone who doesn't understand that I think they're funny. Like if, if you want to, you can find them. And, it, and anyone who like doesn't understand that it's just a joke, I probably wouldn't want to work for them anyway. Yeah. Um, so that's all good. But no, yeah, it's called the Opus Collective. You should go watch it. It's <laughs> fucking hilarious. I'm, dude, I'm like known to be cringy on camera. Really? And that was where it all started, dude. Jeez, I'm, yeah, gonna, have to, dude. I'm gonna have to scope it. Do you have a ghost channel, bro? No, I'm using the same one as... You did back in the day? Yeah, but those ones are, those videos have been hidden, hidden well. What are they? Vlogs. Vlogs? Okay. Yeah. How many vlogs did you make? Probably like 30. 30? Yeah. Okay, that's, I honestly made around there too. Oh, we got one! No way! Let's go! No, you're you're on a rock. I'm on a rock. <laughs> Wait. Let me feel it. Don't break it. Yeah, you. I don't. I think you're just pulling up seaweed. Damn it! <laughs> I got so excited. That would have been sick. Why did you start a vlog? Like, what was your inspiration? Because mine was Casey Neistat. So. Really? Yeah, for sure, dude. Um, He's, he was my legend. He still is, dude. I freaking love that guy. Voice I guy. used to watch him, but now I don't. Okay. Well, now he doesn't post. Yeah, he doesn't post. You're yeah. right. Yeah, so I don't know why I started. I I kind of just figured, like, I was kind of filming everything, so I just thought, I mean, if I do all the videos I film, I do for myself, and then I kind of just figure, well, they're made, so I might as well throw them up, and that's kind of the way I'm looking at my YouTube now, too. So you stopped vlogging, and then you were probably in high school at that point. And what was high school like? What was high school like for you? Absolutely terrible. I compare it to prison. Really? Yeah. Why was it so bad for you? Because like, I don't think a lot of people like high school, but they like at least like the social aspect normally. Uh, and were you just not into any of that or what? No, I mean, I love hanging out with my friends and stuff and like doing stuff after school. But I mean, having me who like has to move around and like do stuff, just like forcing me to sit in a desk and learn about like chemistry was literally torture for my mind. <laughs> yeah. Like I really suffered in school. Yeah, it's 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 interesting because I think yeah, like I said, a lot of people don't like school, but I've never heard. I don't know if I know anyone who doesn't like school as much as you don't like school. Yeah, I mean, I think it's also the like I I don't really like being told what to do, and yeah. I think like a lot of people don't like school, but they're like, well, I'm gonna live with it. But me, it's like, no, I don't like school, and I'm not gonna live with it. If you know yeah, what I mean. True. I like, knew I wasn't going to college in like fifth grade. Really? Yeah. That's nuts. I mean, like my, luckily my parents are very, very supportive. And why, so why were they, like, how did you convince them? Because a lot of people have issues. I didn't like, really have to convince them. They, they let me do my thing and that's, I appreciate it. Really? A ton. Yeah, that's awesome. You're in high school and then everyone like starts applying to colleges and taking SATs and you were just like, fuck that. I'm gonna do me. I'm like, yeah, why waste your money spending 60 grand or whatever and you might not even find out what you want to do after and smart kid you spend your entire time like partying or whatever it's not really my your stick not my vibe dude i don't know if i got a fish or another rock whoa, whoa! that was a fish dude no Fuck! way yeah was it moving yeah it was look at that what is that it just moved yo i just saw that? something black yo dude that was what was Whoa! Eating. What do you got going on, bro? <laughs> no! Did you lose it? I just lost everything. Fuck! Dude, we're, I'm so that? bad at fishing. Dude, that was weird. I feel like I... That was kind of trippy. Fuck. Da, 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 Dude, I'm, da, wait, da, we got da, a bite. Da, da, da. Evidence. Oh, you lost your whole rig. Dude, it fucking ripped it off. 
it's gone. I was like, oh, it's another rock. And then it just freaking snapped that shit off. Uh, dude, I mean, I, I just applaud you for doing your own thing. Cause I think that a lot of people may not even really be into college, but it's like they succumb to the fact. The system. Like, yeah, the system. And it's like, it's just so much easier to go to college, especially like if you, I don't know. It's just like people want to get out of their hometown. People want to change. Yeah. And then they're like, if you can come here and then you're not really paying anything because it's all invisible because like, you know, I, I think a lot of people don't realize how much they're actually paying. It's freaking nuts how much money college is, dude. It's ridiculous. And you, they can't even guarantee when you finish that you like are going to get a job. Know what you want to do. Yeah. Like I know so many people who have gone through college and then they like change change what they were majoring in or I know people at college who have no idea what they're doing. I mean, really? I don't I don't want to like hate There's definitely people who I think the majority of people need to go to college. I mean, if you don't if you have no idea what you're doing and you're kind of lost or whatever, but what do you what do you major in? I'm broadcast journalism and documentary. And ha so you've been at college for 2 years? I've been at college. This is my third and third year. And, and do you I, feel like you've learnt your fair share for compared to what your tu tuition is? Well, that's the question, isn't it? Um, that's a huge question. No, I don't. I don't think I've I, I've learned. I've definitely learned things, but I think college has been more of a a like the connections that I've established and gotten have been, That's I, don't know huge. If, I don't know if it's worth it. Cause like my school's pretty expensive. It's like my, right, my I go to Where, Chapman university and I think it's like 30 grand per sem, like 20, 25 per semester. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I am satisfied. I feel like connections is like the hugest. That's the best biggest part. By far the biggest part, especially in the industry that I um, want to go into. True. Um, it's all a connections business. But uh, I've learned more about what I want to do on YouTube probably. Are you on a rock? Yeah. Probably more on YouTube and podcasts than I have um, in school. Wow. Almost. What honestly, a closing statement. Dude, honestly, it's up there for sure. What I like, I'm trying to think. Yeah, podcast is huge. You learn so much. Podcasts are huge. And it's not even like like I mean, yeah, the podcast I've done with people, but more I'm saying more of like the podcast I listen to over the years. Oh. Do you like do you listen to any podcasts or YouTube? Like what are your favorite YouTubers? I'm a big Joe Rogan kind of guy. You are? Okay. Yeah. I like I like Joe Rogan too. I have some issues with Joe Rogan. Same. For the most part. What, what are, are your you uh, you uh, go uh, you go first because uh, I've been talking too much. The reason I like Joe Rogan is because I often agree with what he says and I feel like that's with most people. I mean, you're not going to listen to someone all day that you don't think the same way as they do. Yeah. So I think that's why I enjoy listening to him a lot. But I feel like, honestly, recently he's been, uh, like he didn't state his viewpoint as much as he used to. I mean, he states his viewpoint more than he used to. Yeah. Um, like his opinions on stuff? Yeah, which, I mean, for me, I'm fine with it because I usually agree. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> I could see why people wouldn't like that. Why people are getting turned off or have been getting turned off recently. There's this one Joe Rogan podcast where he talked to the CEO uh, or the one of the founders of Whole Foods. Uh -huh. And it was like the worst interview I've ever heard because he just disagreed what? with this guy about like veganism. He just like didn't agree and they, they just talked for over. It's like a free and a half hour podcast. The owner of Whole Foods the is vegan? The owner of Whole Foods is, yeah, he's vegan. And the whole time Joe Rogan's is talking about, and this is- His me, elk? I, yeah, well, it, well, not even that, but he's just like, oh, like that diet is not as superior or whatever. Mm. And like, I'm not gonna rip on Joe Rogan cause he's, he's awesome and I love him. But I think that was like a pretty, like having like one of the most brilliant people, CEOs probably in the world. Like think about how big Whole Foods is and like how, like when that came out, how unique of a market that captured. Uh -huh. Like you like make a, what seems like a Whole Foods, like health farmer's market store on like a mass production level. Like that's fucking brilliant. Yeah. And like, but then you waste 
an hour of the conversation talking about something that you personally disagree with. But yeah, so you graduated high school and then <laughs> what was your plan? Like, cause a lot of people like, maybe they don't even want to do college, but they just don't know. They're like, I don't know what to do. Like, well, my, it's so much easier to just be like, okay, now it makes sense to go to college. Yeah. You know what I mean? My plan for many years was freelance video and photography. Yeah. And then, um, but then, but then surprisingly COVID was kind of like a blessing for me in a certain way because I didn't realize how vulnerable that industry is. Like it's when COVID vulnerable. hit, I did not get a single job for like eight months or something. And were you working commercial already at that point? Yeah. Like I was getting gigs probably like once a week or something. Really? So I was like, I was making decent, like fun spending money. And then COVID hit and I didn't, I didn't get a single job. So I was like, Hmm, I got to think about multiple, getting multiple incomes from different areas, just in case others aren't doing as well as I expected. Yeah. My goal for it is kind of like, I want to be doing this kind of stuff for the rest of my life, just yeah. like having fun. And like, yes, this boat costs a lot of money, but like being able, like, I don't want to, I mean, I'd love to travel the world and whatever, but not on some crazy budget. Like, I just want to have like cheap fun. Like here we are fishing in the middle of the yeah. ocean. Like it's pretty simple. So I want to be able to have not that a freedom huge budget going into this. Yeah. So I want to be able to have that freedom. And I feel like having a real estate income would allow me to like do this kind of stuff yeah. for a lot longer because doing photo and video stuff, I mean, it's so hard to make money. And it's not very sustainable. <laughs> no. Uh, and you don't know when your next job's coming or whatever. I mean, dude, I know. That's why I like the idea of YouTube because you can control it. Like when you, you, you control when you post, you control when you make money. You, well, essentially. And, and for me, well, at least, I mean, ultimately it would be nice to make money, but it's, it, it can't be about making money in the beginning because then you're, you're going to get nowhere. Basically, if your goal is to make money, then all of your decision making is going to be towards what other people who want to make money, which makes you just the same as all those people. Right. Hmm. So if everyone. I have a rebuttal with that though. Okay, go off. Well, because the reason I'm posting on YouTube is like I, you've seen my short videos or whatever I make Wait, on real Instagram. Quick, yeah, give, give some context to, for people about your YouTube channel. My and, YouTube channel? Yeah, so you have a YouTube channel now. I started a YouTube channel like a month and a half ago. Okay. Two months, eh, I don't know, How I haven't checked. How many subscribers do you have and like what has been your, like what, do you, what kind of videos do you make? I have somewhere around 110 subscribers. Hell yeah. So we're starting off, we're starting off small. Dude, but I have you gotta 17. Start, <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, you gotta start somewhere. <laughs> You don't exactly. start at a thousand, but it's been, or it's, it's quite a hard thing to start. Dude, I know. I mean, the first thousand subscribe, first, yeah, thousand subscribers. I don't know how it's even possible. I don't know how to get in the algorithm. That's pretty the much algorithm. the algorithm. The algae. I don't know how to get algae. in there. Basically, it's hiking stuff, surfing, spearfishing, fishing, why outdoor should, adventures. Why should people watch your videos and not Sam Colders? Sam Colders. Dude, I, I uh, unfollowed like everything. Oh, you, re you did? I mean, yeah. I I'm just saying like another person who makes like. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like there's no emotion and like life to them. They're just like okay. s cinematic shots with like crazy filters and transitions and stuff. And yeah. there's no like emotion. Like my, my videos are very raw cut and it's probably like me like screaming or throwing my friends in the water or whatever. It is a lot of that. I, I, I can attest to that. Well, my rebuttal is, is, is that your desire? Yes. You want to make money? Yeah. And you're making them to make money? No. Okay. See, there's the plot twist. Ooh. Okay, sir. So basically, all the videos I make, I make for myself because I just have like this image in my mind when I'm 40 and I'm going to be able to look back in my teens or See, 20s. There you go. That's a good reason. Like I'm going to have every fun adventure documented and I just can't wait for when I'm like that old and I get to laugh and see myself. That's like that. a good reason. So I make those videos anyway. And then I'm just sitting at, sitting at the, sitting on them, looking at them and I'm like, well, if I have them and they're already made, I might as well throw them up on YouTube and it's not really to, I mean, I think people would appreciate them and they like seeing them, seeing them and they might make them make people happy, but 
I mean, I put him up there to maybe have the chance to make money, a couple hundred bucks here and there. Yeah, I think that that's not a bad, uh, a bad thesis. But the it, the thing is, is to get it to a point where you start making money, you have to be unique, right? Yeah. You have to bring something to the table that people will like enjoy. And I think you have some of that with like the emotion and stuff. And honestly, it just like takes time, dude. Yeah. To like figure shit out. And I'm in the same boat. Like this, dude, the audio might not even be working on this. Who knows? <laughs> testing, testing, one, testing, two, three. Testing, testing. But uh, I think no, that no, no, it's no, just, no, no. <laughs> it's just finding a blend between being unique and then also making something that like sure is like marketable and uh, yeah, you can eventually like make capital off of. Yeah. But what I am interested in more is because the thing with the thing with uh, you know how earlier we were like, oh, well, you can upload YouTube videos and then you can control like relatively like making money eventually. Yeah. Well, the the thing with that is that like if you get demonetized for some reason or like something. What does that happens, mean? If you're demon, can they? Can you? get demonetized on one video or if you get demonetized your it's your can channel get de you, you, it's both i think so because i'm worried about that because like i have i mean my language on my youtube is so bad yeah and i know me too and so you might get demon i don't know if you get or i might have like I don't drinking think you get, on it or whatever I don't think you get demonetized for language i think you get less potential from making money uh but one thing i have know from uh just listening to people I'm interested. Shout out to Colin and Samir. YouTube AdSense is just a garbage way to like make money. Uh huh. Uh, it's not reliable. There's like nothing really to it that, I don't know if I have a rock or a fish. If you want to make money, mm -hmm. you, you, have, you have a business that your YouTube channel promotes rather than just trying to make money off AdSense. So how are you planning on doing that? Um, I'm planning on making good videos for a while. And then and coming up with something later. Yeah, because like you can't if you don't build a solid found foundation, you can't expect to build like a freaking sick thing, you know? Yeah. So I'm gonna figure out what I'm doing, and then like if I can, and like like for me making money, it would be cool. I'm not gonna say it wouldn't, but like eventually, like I'm planning on. I'm not like planning on like being able to fully like m make a ton of money. Oh my god! Yay! Look who it is! <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Hoberman. <laughs> Speak of the devil. We got C. Hoberman on the Ripper. That is hilarious. Yo, dude. Welcome, welcome to my beach for <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, sir. Hello. Dude, I need to jump in. I'm huh. so hot. Can you hold this? You can block. Sure. Whoa, this thing it's is crazy looking. Here, I'll do it It's then. not waterproof. Jump All right, yeah, we have nothing. our first deckhand going in. Chief freaking Hooskers. Oh. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, ay, ay. Oh. Man overboard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it feels really good, actually. Oh, yeah, we're back in action. C. Hoverman, Charlie Hoverman, just visited us and uh, out in the depths. Now he's, he's over there. He's going for a surf, so we might join him in a little bit. But I just wanted to talk a little bit more about yo, YouTube channel, fool. Wait, more, we were talking about monetizing and stuff, right? And like building like a creator business around like your mm. YouTube channel and having that be your like primary source of income versus making money off AdSense. Yeah. Like what is your, what, what, what kind of creator business could you see yourself making? I'm not sure, I haven't really thought about it. I have thought, I don't, when you asked me that, I just thought of something. What'd you so think I, of? I've always had this, whenever I plan my road trips or whatever, um, or adventures, I do like weeks of research before I actually do them. And I set up like where I'm gonna be sleeping that night and the hike I'm gonna do and the details of that hike and how to do it and certain aspects I need to know about it. And I've, I've thought before some part of an in, like income I could get from that is selling my Road trips? Selling my like uh, my plan. Yeah. Because so that's actually much, such a good idea. So much thought goes into like planning a su successful road trip. Yeah. From like what what activity you're gonna do that day and how long it's gonna take and how long it will take you after that activity to get to the campground and then yeah you want to make sure you're going to like the coolest campground in the area. That's so maybe actually that a really could good be. Idea. 
because the wave income yeah for sure because that the whole thing is you want it to align with like something that you do on your channel and i do tons of road and trips you do tons of road trips and it could like a lot of viewers could probably really like identify with that which could be super cool yeah um yeah that sounds sick so and then like some uh i'm trying to think of people so like emma chamberlain do you know who that is uh, my sister's watcher. Oh, okay. But I mean, so she she makes uh, so I've, she I've makes wa- like go I've, ahead. the coffee. Yeah. Is that where you're going? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you had it well, before? We, we talked about it. Oh, we did. On yeah. Well, yeah. Call. We we talked about it on the phone. We talk about our weekly strategies for uh, what we want to do on our YouTube channel every week. If anyone wants to join the queue, I thought about that being like mm. another creative business. Yeah. Is you like run like, like you can like get. You, it's basically like a social network for creators where they can like get people that do similar like like okay a bunch of podcasters get together and it matches you with people like if everyone is making like an action sports podcast or like a road trip podcast mm-hmm. and then you have different people doing those podcasts and you could like you listen to each person's podcast throughout the week and then like figure out what you like about that person's and then you like have like weekly meetings or something totally like that. yeah and then uh, what has like been some of your other strategy as far as like what you want to do with your YouTube channel? And also like, so you want to do your real estate and then is YouTube going to be like your main thing alongside of that? Basically the real estate's just going to fund the YouTube stuff? Um, That's kind of your goal? In the I- ideal world, my plan is real estate is going to fund like my life, my house, my whatever it is, like the big stuff. And then my YouTube dream would be to make enough money to fund adventures like this. Yeah. To like be able to buy a boat like this and buy my tackle and buy my gas to get here. Yeah. That's like, that'd be my dream. Or to be able to go on a road trip and know like the YouTube, the video I'm filming on the road trip is paying for, for the road trip, the $500 road trip. Yeah. Or that's, a, yeah that's, that's, that's my ideal. That's situation. a hell of a dream, sir. It is, but I feel like it's not really, I mean, C- couple thousand bucks here and there. Yeah, that's true. It just depends where the like my funds. My funds cheap. Nice. I mean, <laughs> m- me hiking or something, which is one of my recent videos. I was hiking in Malibu and I got to this pretty sick spot. And I mean, when you think about it, the breakdown of that video, I probably spent like fifty bucks that day on Dude, gas and lunch. That's what you should do though, because the best. It's funny. Uh, I listened to another Colin and Samir podcast. And uh, they, they went to YouTube, like YouTube, YouTube. Mm-hmm. And they were like pitching them a show idea for YouTube. And then the YouTube like executives asked, they're like, how much is the show gonna cost like per episode? Uh-huh. And they were like $4,000, they're like wrong. Like it should be free. Uh-huh. Because the best, I- not the best ideas, but if you can't make something for like really cheap or free before injecting money into it. Uh-huh. Once again, these are not my ideas. I'm stealing these. But <laughs> uh, if you can't, make something like basically for free, like how do you expect to be able to like sustain it over a long period of time, you know right. what I mean? Uh, and, I, and, and in ways like I haven't done that because like most of the things I do in some way cost like a little bit of money. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I guess like this is free. It's just like the, the initial investment, like the gear and whatnot. The equipment's not free. Yeah, but. I would say the best kind of fun is free. Yeah? Yeah, that's I like one that. of my sayings. That's gonna be the title of the video, I think. Like going out, like at home in Santa Monica, if I look out my window and I know it's gonna be a glassy day or whatever, I grab my dad's paddleboard or a surfboard or whatever, and I just like paddle towards the horizon and like sit out there and see what animals or stuff comes by. And when you think about it, it probably costs $5 to make that video. Like the gas to get to the beach, gas back, and that's it. Yeah and I have so much fun doing it and it's basically free. Dude, and like, I like anyone that. can do that. That's what kind of frustrates me too is I, I always find like kids in our generation are just wasting so much time inside just like not having fun. And why is that you think? I don't know. I just feel like people aren't like, don't have a desire to like get out there or they think of excuses of why I can't do it but like I just had I just said all you have to do is go to the beach and paddle out on a glassy day and you'll have the time of your life and it's completely free anyone can do it and I don't know 
I, I would love that for that to be a message too on my YouTube, like getting people outside. Cause I think it's just so important, especially now with like how involved just like mental health and like how good it is to exercise and be outside and not waste your entire day inside. And I have to practice what I preach too. Cause I sometimes spend a full day inside just wasting my day away. Yeah. Me, I mean, I do too. Yeah. And it's funny because, uh, what I've found is that you have like really high highs but then you'll have not even like like low lows, quote unquote, but it'll just be like periods of where you're just not as like motivated to do. It's funny because people, I've found that people, including me, I've become to the point where I'm not even motivated to do fun things. Mm -hmm. Like like think about like when the surf is going to be like good in the morning and it's 4 a.m. Uh -huh. And like for me, it's sometimes I'm a bitch and I'm like, I don't want to wake up even though I know it's going to be fun. Yeah. So it's like, it's bizarre. And now it's just like a, like a little example, but for like a broader thing where I think a lot of people, including me, like I said, like you, you'll have like the choice of being able to do something cool and different and by putting in not too much work, but then like people still choose to like just yeah. sit around. Why, like, why do you think that is? I mean, personally speaking, the reason I sit around and I like waste my day away, I would say it's my phone. Okay. I mean, that's, like I, you mentioned that you sometimes like struggle with like getting up or wanting to have fun. Yeah. I wouldn't say I really struggle with that. Like I'm constantly just wanting to have fun or do something, but I'll find certain days, maybe when the conditions are, aren't right and I know I can't go out on the boat or hike or whatever, I'll just, I mean, waste my day doing stuff that is not productive at all. And I mean, puts me down a little. Yeah. Um, but I think the important thing about that too is I mentioned earlier that I'm, I'm happy that I'm aware that that is a problem or something I want to work on instead of not, instead of being ob oblivious to it. And do you think a lot of people are? <laughs> I think like everyone is <laughs> like people are content being in their room and not getting out in the sunshine and sweating and doing cool stuff and making the most of and it. Living. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm totally not down for. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going for it, or I want to go for it. Yeah, I am I like going that. for it. All right, real quick, battery died, and then Henry was just like, we're so lucky to be here, and I was like, hell yeah, we are. So that was cool. That was, um, that was a cool experience. That was a cool experience. But yeah, wait, what were we talking about? I don't know, but it was kind of. It was kind of, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of a, uh, one of the better moments on the food cast. But we have forgotten. But alas, the battery died, so. But, um, and then you were talking about how you want your YouTube channel to help people like find them, that part of themselves again. Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe like, I mean, it'd be cool just one person like sees me having fun with friends out in the water, whatever, and they're gonna randomly text one of their buddies and be like, we should do this thing. Yeah, not even like do this thing because I saw it. Like they, they don't have to say that or whatever, but just be like, you want to go to the beach today and hang out or whatever? Yeah. Like that'd be a, that's kind of my goal. Yeah. I feel like this world would just be, or it would, it would benefit so greatly if more people spent more time outside and connected more with themselves. And just like, when I'm outside, I think so clearly. And I feel like so many people right now just have so many stirring thoughts in their heads. And I don't know, just being outside and doing stuff like this just makes you happy and think clearer and I think it would benefit everyone greatly if they spent more time outdoors. Oh yeah. And everyone, I can't say everyone, because I know weather's huge for some people or maybe you just don't have the time to, but if you do, which I feel like most people could find the time, it just really helps your mind too. And I don't know, I love it. It's my I, I think it's people too. Thing. Like, yeah, it's like, like, it's like in your it. DNA. Yeah. So like, Oh, dude, Charlie's on a sick wave and we're about to go sesh. So, do you have any last words, friend? Um, Henry Hume, YouTuber, college, not even dropout, college non attendee extraordinary. Not, in, not Outdoor attendee. adventurer, hiker, uh, fisherman, freaking studly muffin. <laughs> Fun maker. Fun maker. Last words? Um, any tips for the, for the crew out there? the listeners for the for the viewers i would just say uh try and make the most of it get outside does great things for you um 
And I think that's uh, I think that's the main thing I preach is get outside and make the most of it. Have fun with friends. And I would also say question a lot of the stuff that's um, presented to you. Yep. I like it. Question everything. Well, thank you, Henry Huey, for coming on the world's podcast. Dude, I can't believe I'm on a podcast. Like, <laughs> what the heck? Dude, I, thought, I, I know literally I never, ever would have thought I'd be freaking mic'd up. Like, what is this yeah, mic'd up on, on a, a podcast? Like and subscribe, children yep. and adults you listening. Bet. Dude, look at what he's doing right now. We're on I'm a, trying. We're I'm on trying a, my best. We're on a podcast right now fishing on an inflatable boat. There is absolutely nobody on YouTube doing it. Have you added at the end of your videos like the option the end card to, thing? Yeah. Yeah. I just figured that out. Yeah. It's so, like, pretty, it's kind of a game changer. It's a game changer, but the thing is is people only watch like 10% of these anyway. Bye.